بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد we continue today in our discussion of some of the names and attributes of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and today we move on to another series of names dealing with one verb and one concept and that is the verb and concept of مغفرة غفرة يغفر مغفرة and the word غفرة actually means originally in pre-Islamic Arabic it means to cover up something so ghafara means to conceal ghafara means to put a layer on top of something and eventually it meant to overlook somebody's harm that he has done to you you cover up his harm you ignore that he ever did something to you so it became the connotation of forgiveness even though the original connotation is to cover up to pretend it doesn't exist so you put some sand on it you put something else on it so you don't see it you conceal it so ghafara means to ignore the problem that the person has done to you you conceal it and in classical arabic the word for helmet was mighfar because you're covering your head and you're concealing it from the same root ghafara mighfar so the point being that allah azza wa jal of course is characterized with this attribute of maghfirah and once again in over 300 verses allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attributes this concept to himself and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions wa man yaghfiru dhunuba illa allah who else can perfect maghfirah of one's sins other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who else can forgive sins? Our Qadi today, he recited, I'lamu anna Allah shadeedu al-iqabi wa anna Allah ghafoorur rahim. No, I'lamu, no, that Allah is strict in punishment, but also know that Allah is ghafoor and rahim. And Allah says in the Quran, Nabbi ibadi anni ana al-ghafoorur rahim. Inform my servants that I am the ghafoor and the rahim. So Allah wants to announce to the world, and He wants us to recognize, and He wants us to believe and to know that of His names, Nabbi ibadi, inform my servants that I am al ghafoor and al rahim. So Allah Azza wa Jal calls Himself al ghafoor, and it is not the only name that is derived from the verb ghafara. In fact, there are at least seven names in the Quran, all of them derived from the verb to forgive. Seven different nouns that Allah has ascribed to Himself, and all of these are proper names. But as we explained in our earlier lecture, not all of the names are from the 99. Allah has infinite number of names, and of those there are some that are from the obviously 99. These seven names that revolve around the root ghafara, number one and the most common of these is al ghafur al ghafur and in fact al ghafur is one of the most oft mentioned names of allah in the entire quran almost 100 times the ta- the term al ghafur occurs 91 to be precise 91 times and then another name of allah is al ghafir or ghafir al dham and a third name is al ghaffar so al ghafir al ghafur al ghaffar and i'll explain the differences in a while also, number four, you have wasi al maghfira, the one whose forgiveness is vast. Wasi, it's vast. Allah can forgive anything and everything. Number five, ahl al maghfira, the one who has the right to forgive, the one who's characterized by forgiveness. Allah is ahl al maghfira. He is the one who has the most right to be characterized with forgiveness. Number six, dhul maghfira. And dhu in Arabic, dhu and tha and the have the same meaning. Dhul jalali wal ikram. Dhu means the owner of. Dhu means nobody owns it like the one who says dhu. Dhul maghfira, the owner of maghfira. The one to whom maghfira is ascribed. So dhul maghfira, Allah azza wa jal is the sahib al maghfira. The one who controls and who has manifested and who has perfected maghfira. And the seventh noun and the seventh name of Allah derived from this root is khayru. The best of those who forgive. Khayrul Ghafirin. Now, what is the difference between Ghafir and Ghafur and Ghaffar? What is the difference between Ghafir and Ghafur and Ghaffar? And all three are mentioned in the Quran. Ghafir is the simple, uh, if you like, noun, the one who does. Ghafir, the one who does forgiveness. So the one who forgives. So Sami'a means to hear. Sami', the one who hears. 
Qama means to stand. Qaim, the one who's standing. So Allah is ghafir with them. Allah forgives the sins. Al-ghafur is a noun form that emphasizes the power of the verb. So Qaim means to stand. Qayyum is much more than Qaim. Ghafir means to forgive. Ghafur is the one who has the power to forgive no matter how large the sin. In other words, Ghafur is for the quantity. Ghafur is for, excuse me, the quality, excuse me. Ghafur is for the quality. No matter how large the sin, Al Ghafur can cover it up. No matter how heinous the crime, no matter how evil the deed, Al Ghafur has the power to cover it up. As for Al Ghafar, Al Ghafar goes back to a structure that indicates frequency. Fa'al. Allah does it and then does it again. And then does it and then does it again. Allah continuously does maghfirah. So ghafoor is for? For what? For the quality. Ghafar is for? Quantity. Ghafoor for quality. No matter how large the sin, Allah can forgive. Ghafar, no matter how frequent the sin, Allah does not count. And there's the famous hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of a man who would commit a sin and he would raise his hands and he would say, Oh my Lord, I have committed a sin. Faghfirli. You are the one who forgives, forgive me. So Allah forgives him. Then after a while he commits a sin. He raises his hands. He says, Oh my Lord, I've committed a sin, so forgive me. Allah forgives him. The hadith goes on three, four, five times every time. He says, Ighfirli, Ighfirli, Ighfirli. Then Allah Azza wa Jal calls the angels. And he says, I have called you to testify that you witness that this servant of mine, who is the perpetual sinner, he's always committing sins. This servant of mine, I am calling you to testify that I have forgiven him because... He has recognized that he has sinned against a Lord and he must continually ask forgiveness from the forgiving Lord. So the fact that the servant recognizes, he never loses hope. He commits a sin, he asks Allah to forgive. Commits another sin, then another sin, then another sin. The true servant never gives up hope. Always raises his hand and says, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Ghaffar, you'll forgive me again because you are the person, the one who forgives. So he never loses hope in Allah's forgiveness. Also, brothers and sisters, one of the things we're talking about in these series is the connections and the pairs. What names does Allah mention with His, uh, with His names and attributes? What are the pairs that are found in the Quran? And of course, of the most common pairs is Al Ghafur Al Rahim. And I mentioned this when I talked about the name Al Rahim. And I mentioned this is perhaps the most or one of the most common combinations in the whole Quran that Allah is Ghafur Rahim. And of course, Allah says, we just quoted, Nabbi ibadi anni an al Ghafur Rahim. Inform my servants that I am Al Ghafur and Al Rahim. And of course, the two names, they complement one another perfectly. Because Allah has Rahmah, He forgives. And because Allah forgives, this is a manifestation of his rahmah. So Allah forgives because he's merciful. And Allah is merciful because he forgives. So the two of them are linked together. And it is not a surprise therefore that this combination, al ghafur al-Rahim, is one of the most common combinations in the Quran. A number of times Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that he is Al-Aziz Al-Ghafur. Al-Aziz Al-Ghafur. And Al-Aziz Al-Ghafur, uh, it also occurs as we said uh, that Aziz, uh, that, uh, Aziz Al-Rahim. A same thing here. Aziz means the one of power. So sometimes you forgive once again out of weakness, right? The classic example, if a tyrant, if a zalim, if a powerful man, if a cop gives you a speeding ticket, you say, khalas, I'll forgive him for the sake of Allah. You're not really forgiving. You have no other choice. You're irritated, he trapped you, whatever. This is not actual maghfirah. This is maghfirah coming from weakness. But Allah is saying, his maghfirah is not coming from weakness. His maghfirah is coming from strength. If he wanted to, he could punish. But he does not punish. He is Al-Aziz Al-Ghafur. Despite the fact that he is the Almighty, he chooses to forgive from a position of strength and grandeur and majesty, not from a position of weakness. Also, of the combinations in the Quran, Al-Ghafur Al-Wadud. Wa huwa Al-Ghafur Al-Wadud. Allah is Al-Ghafur and Al-Wadud. And we're going to come to the name Al-Wadud. For now, we'll simply translate it as the one full of generous love. 
Wood is a loving, nurturing generosity. Wadud, the one who loves from a love that is generous. So Allah is Al Ghafoor because He's Wadud. Allah does not love to punish. Allah says in the Quran, What will I gain by punishing you if you believe in me and worship me? Allah does not love to punish, He loves to forgive. Allah loves to forgive. So Allah Azza wa is saying, I am the Ghafoor, the Wadud. I love to forgive. It is my nature to forgive. And of the interesting combinations as well in the Quran is Al Ghafoor Al Shakur. Al Ghafoor Al Shakur. This is actually three or four times in the Quran. Allah combines Ghafoor and Shakur. And again, we're going to come to Shakur later on. But Shakur here. And by the way, one of the times it occurs, very interesting ayah in the Quran, uh, in, in Surah Fatir, Allah is mentioning the conversation of the people of Jannah. And the people of Jannah, they say, Alhamdulillah, We thank Allah, He has allowed us to come to Jannah. No harm will touch us, nothing, no problem will come to us. Verily, Allah is Ghafoorun Shakur. So the people of Jannah will describe Allah as Ghafoorun Shakur. Why? Why the people of Jannah, Ghafoor and Shakur? Because in order to get to Jannah, two things must happen. Number one, Allah must forgive our frequent copious sins. That's Al Ghafoor. Because otherwise, we're never going to earn Jannah. Our Prophet ﷺ said, None of you will enter Jannah because of his good deeds. Jannah is too precious, precious to earn. Think about it. We live for 60 years. Of those 60, 40 years are involved with this dunya. And the rest of them in playing and games. How much do we actually worship Allah? How much time do we actually spend? How much quality? From that, Allah is going to give us eternal paradise. Jannat and tajima tahti lanhar. How many sins have we committed? So in order to get to Jannah, Allah Azza wa has to overlook our sins. So that is ghafoor. Then He has to take our meager good. Our, our dismal, abysmal products of worship and then magnify them and that is Shakur. Shakur, Allah Azza wa Jal rewards more than you deserve to be rewarded. Shakara is to thank. Shakur, the one who gives you more than what you deserve. And we all know that Allah never ever gives one good deed for one good deed, correct? He never gives one good deed for our one good deed. The minimum balance with Allah is 10. Up to 700 and sometimes even more than this. The minimum balance, we check in, we cash in the check for $1, Allah will give us minimum 10 back. This is Shakur. That's minimum by the way. Up to 100, 1000, more. So Shakur, Allah takes our small quantity and gives us back much more. How then can we get to Jannah? Only through Allah being a combination of Ghafoor and Shakur. He forgives our sins and He then blesses our good deeds to give us and grant us Jannah. And how then do we get Allah's Maghfirah? Very quickly, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala asked the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, teach me a dua that I can make to Allah in my salah. This hadith is in Bukhari. This is Abu Bakr asking the Prophet teach me a dua that I can make in my salah. So the Prophet said to Abu Bakr, say this dua, Allahumma inni zalamtu nafsi zulman kathira. Oh Allah, I have wronged myself many, many wrongs. Wa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa ant. And no one forgives yaghfir sins other than you. Faghfir li maghfiratan min indik. So forgive me a forgiveness coming from you. Fa innaka anta al ghafoor rahim for you are the ghafoor and the rahim simple dua if you haven't memorized the arabic the english is very simple oh my lord i have wronged myself many many times and no one can forgive maghfirah my wrongs other than you so forgive me of forgiveness coming from you because you are the ghafoor you are the rahim so how do we gain allah's maghfirah i'll mention two things and then we'll call it an evening number one number one by asking for maghfirah and I will continuously forgive. Allah says, who? The one who repents to me, Taba. And he does good and he believes in me. So how do we get Allah's maghfirah? We say, Astaghfirullah. We say, Allahumma ghfirli. We say, Rabbi adhnabtu dhanban faghfirli. We say, Rabbana zalamna anfusana faghfir lana. So we ask Allah's forgiveness. 
And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahi inni la atubu ilallahi wa astaghfiru akthar man mi'ata marra fi kulli yawm. I ask Allah's forgiveness and I seek His forgiveness more than 100 times a day. If this is Rasulullah sallallahu then where do we stand? So always saying Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Anas ibn Malik said, sometimes I would count the tongue of the Prophet and moving 70 times in one majlis saying Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. We should make this our habit wherever we are, driving the car, waiting for something, sitting in our houses, our tongue should just be moving. Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. That's the number one way, asking Allah for forgiveness. And number two, how do we get Allah's maghfira? We learn to forgive others. We learn to forgive other people who have done us wrong. By forgiving others, Allah will forgive us. And the story is very long. We don't have time to get into it. I mentioned it in my seerah, the story of the slander of Aisha. Very, very traumatic story. Very painful story where some people said things about our mother they should not have said. And one of those people who said things about our mother was actually a cousin of Abu Bakr, meaning a second cousin of Aisha. So a second cousin of Aisha was actually saying some of these slanderous lies. And Abu Bakr as siddiq happened to be giving him a stipend because he was a poor man. So when he heard that his own relative was involved with this, he swore by Allah, Wallahi, I'm never going to give this man a penny. Fair. Why would he give a penny to somebody that's saying this about his daughter? But guess what? The standards of Abu Bakr are not mine and yours. Abu Bakr's maqam is much bigger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses that we recite to this day. Let not the people of Fadl, let not the people of, of stature, Abu Bakr is people of Fadl, let not the people of Fadl and the people whom Allah has blessed swear to Allah that they're not going to help out the poor people that are their relatives. Forgive them. Notice what the ayah says. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? Yes, He's done a wrong. But don't you want Allah to forgive you? And I want you to think about this as we finish off and move on. Wallah, I want your minds to think about this. This man slandered his own daughter. And he was being paid by Abu Bakr a stipend, a charity. And Allah Azza wa Jal said, no, 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 you forgive him. Turn the other cheek, ignore what he's done. And continue to give him sadaqah. Why? Don't you want Allah to forgive you for your sins? So by forgiving him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. Ala tuhibbuna an yaghfir Allahu lakum. The final point, brothers and sisters, some of our scholars have said the most optimistic verse in the whole Quran is the verse of Surah Al Zumur. Qul ya ibadi al ladina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqonatu min rahmatillah inna Allah yaghfiru al dhunuba jami'a inna huhu al ghafur al rahim. This is the most optimistic verse in the whole Quran and it mentions maghfir over and over again. Say, O oh my servants who have wronged themselves, do not give up hope of Allah's forgiveness. For verily, Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Allah forgives all sins. Verily, He is the ghafoor. He is the rahim. We ask the, the, the ghafoor and the rahim to forgive our sins and to bless us in this world and the next. And we'll continue inshallah to, tomorrow. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.